No one has anticipated that this year we'd be in a position, or even next year, that we're not going to use any more oil or gas, that we're not going to be engaged in any fossil fuels. We're going to stop subsidizing those fossil fuels. We're going to make significant changes. And it just makes the argument that we should move more rapidly to renewable energy, to wind and solar and other means of, of, of energy. But the idea that we're going to end and somehow — but it does on the surface, I admit to you. We're going to COP to deal with renewable energy, and, and I'm saying, why are you guys cutting off oil and raising the price just to make it look harder for us? But it's, it's a legitimate question. I think, though, that if anybody thinks about it, no one ever thought that tomorrow — for example, it's going to take us uh, between now and 2030 to have half the vehicles in America electric vehicles. Uh, so the idea we're not going to need gasoline for automobiles is just not realistic. But we will get to the point that by 2050 we have zero emissions, that we have uh, um, uh, tax credits uh, for uh, of $320 billion for dealing with alternatives by people getting tax credit for moving on, on solar panels, on wind, and a whole range of other things, and winterizing their properties. I, I don't think you're going to need any, any punitive action to get people to step up and do those things. And finally, today I was proud to announce, together with our close part EU partners, another critical win for both American workers and the climate agenda. The United States and the European Union have agreed to negotiate the world's first trade agreement based on how much carbon is in a product as we negotiated the steel and aluminum tariffs that were in place. The deal will immediately remove a point of significant tension with our friends in the European Union. And it rejects the false idea that we cannot grow an economy and support American workers while tackling climate crisis at the same time.